Here's a sampling of some of my planes that I thought I would use to describe what I'm going to do. This is a number four, and this plane it looks like it sat in somebody's barn or garage for the better part of a century. It's got a healthy rust on it. This is not a very attractive look. In contrast, I have this number three. It's a Type 7, and it has this beautiful gray matte mottled patina on the body. And uh, when you look at this plane, you can just get the feeling that somebody just a few weeks ago took this off his workbench and used it. It doesn't look like it sat at the back of somebody's garage for 100 years. And this, to me, is a very desirable look. The tote's broken, and I'm in the process of repairing that, but that's another video. And on the other end of the spectrum, I have this Miller's Falls number 5 knockoff. I pulled out all the stops when I refinished this because I was having a good time. And I, I took the time to lap the bottom and the right cheek. There you can see the left cheek. You can see the scratches on it. Now, uh, just to give you an idea how poorly this thing came from the factory. Kind of wanted it to look somewhat shiny and new. And I think this is a legitimate look. And some people, when they restore things, might want them to look like that. And I think for most of us, restorations would land somewhere between something that looks like this and something that looks like this. And I'm at a point right now, I'm working on this plane, and I took the time to lap the cheeks, and I discovered they're actually in really good shape. So I took the patina off, unfortunately, and it probably didn't have to. And I'd kind of like to get this gray color back. And I experimented on this Defiance plane several days ago. The body of this plane was shiny and new, like this plane. And I came up with a, a method of kind of graying it a little bit. I thought I would share with you the technique to make this look a little bit more like this guy or this guy. So this gray color is a natural patina that forms on iron or steel if the conditions are right. And it's very stable. And like I say, I think it's desirable. For example, I have three wrenches here that I inherited from my dad. These things are 60, 70 years old and they're obviously not chromed or anything. This pair of pliers, well I used to use these as a boy a good 50 years ago and for my entire life these pliers have looked just like this. So this gray, bluish, dark coating is very stable and it's a form of oxidation and this is magnetite. In contrast, what we all know as rust is also a form of oxidation. This is known as hematite and this is not very stable and this is not very desirable but there is a technique to create a patina like this and it starts by creating hematite and then putting it under the right conditions to form a coating of magnetite and i'd like to share with you how i do it on a plane without mucking up the japanning in fact the color of this is very close to the color of my table saw so the technique is to put a coating of hematite on the piece. In the world of gunsmithing, the technique is to boil the piece in water. And the combination of adding heat in an oxygen-free environment drives the oxygen out of the hematite and it converts it to magnetite. And on this plane, I actually did boil the entire body. I was a little concerned it might hurt the japanning, although I'm pleased to say it doesn't seem as though it hurt the finish at all. But I still don't like that technique. Obviously you want this to be as grease free as you can get it. Long even strokes seems to be the technique and you can see it's already forming a rust. Another technique you can use is to heat this up and I use a hair dryer. Okay, I put a couple coats on. It's got kind of a golden color. And now it's time to heat it up in a low oxygen environment. I have a piece of felt that's folded over three times in the bottom to help lift the plane up away from directly the heat source. And even though this is on low, I still get a little bit of boiling underneath, but I think the added humidity helps increase the oxidation. And you only have to give this a few minutes on a side been a couple minutes. It's been a couple minutes. My idea is that I want this warm, but I don't want it too hot. 
fact, I can pick this up and it's hot. And you know, these are just nitrile gloves, so they're not offering a lot of protection. And I keep a little bit of water handy just to top off that that boils off. And I just have a piece of tape in there to stop any water from coming up through the mouth. And this is what it looks like. It looks like this was through a war and did not exactly win. Now you want to give this a good rubbing to get these surface layers of oxidation off and find out what you have as the base layer. First thing you can do is just rub it with a paper towel and that gets some of the schmutz off. Just to give you an idea of the loose rust. But just for illustrations, that's looking nicer. This is 600 grit paper, and at this point I'm very lightly sanding, and it's completely finesse sanding. Just trying to even out the patina, sand away any of the reds or the browns, try to find out what's underneath. You can see the red coming off. So I just spent a few minutes sanding it. Uh, not very even, which I kind of like. It looks a little more random. This side looks like it could use a little bit more uh, sanding. I see a little bit of red and brown still in here. And realize I could do the whole thing again to make it darker, or I could just oil it. And oiling it will also make it darker. So the color you're getting now is a shade or two lighter than what you're likely to end up with. And for comparison, there's the Defiance. This was done twice, and this one hasn't been oiled yet, but you can see it's definitely getting closer. And here's the number three in contrast. And in comparison to the shiny and new Miller's Falls. So we've definitely darkened it a good shade or so, which I think looks nice. Well, it's an overcast day, but different lighting conditions outside. And again, I'm just trying to get a better idea on the contrast. And compared to the Defiance, the Defiance is darker and grayer. And the number three is a little bit darker. Off camera, I just did an entire second pass. I put the solution on, let it rust up. Uh, then heated it. It's got a definite straw color. You could see a little bit of the blue coming through. And in comparison, you can see it's similar in color to the Defiance already, and that's before I've even oiled this. And to compare it to the number three, kind of similar in tone. I use this stuff. Sometimes I even it out a little bit with uh, some steel wool. And here it is, oiled up compared to the Defiance. And you can see they're very similar in color. And compared to the number three, again, similar. This might be a better way to show the comparison of the various planes and their patina. This, of course, is the Miller's Falls that has a shiny body. And here's the uh, Vaughn and Bushnell that I just did next to the Defiance plane that I did just before that one. And here's the uh, trusty number three. And you can see that's shiny. These two are medium dark, and that's a little bit darker. And I think they all look good. And they're all resting flat on the table saw, so I'll just pan a little left and right to see if slightly different lighting might give you a better idea. Well, here it is, all assembled. That was an iron that I had. This thing came without an iron. 
I think it looks great. I think it's handsome. And it looks like somebody uses this regularly and just pulled it off the bench. Took a couple shavings and put it back on the bench. And here's a shaving that I just pulled off of it. And I'm not sure how much thinner and more uniform you can get than that. So very pleased with it. Appreciate you stopping by my shop. Hope you enjoyed my tune-up of this guy. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.